Hi there, and welcome to Hyundai Power Equipment. Today we're going to look at the HYWT5080 wheeled grass trimmer. Let's go through the contents of your box then, shall we? Okay, as you can see I've assembled everything on the table for you to see. First of all we have the engine unit with the wheels and all the assembly itself. Then we have the trimming head shaft, the trimming head itself, the guard, some spare trimming string, and the toolkit. Now there is a little bit of assembly here. Um, I shall go through that a little bit later and in the toolkit are all the nuts and bolts and screws that you're going to need. Next we have the user manual. All the information you're going to need is in there. A pair of gardening gloves, a face shield with ear defenders, a little bit of assembly there but it's very simple. And finally, most importantly, is your two-stroke mixing bottle. We shall go through the mixing a little bit later. So first of all we'll deal with the handle assembly. If you open up your toolkit, you'll find you have three plastic hand wheels. First of all, lift the handle up the first section and then the second section for now and hold it there. You'll find that your hand wheels go in through this hole here and we'll tighten up in the nut in the back. And it can be folded back down for storage afterwards, but this is the using the new position. So that's one. And two. And finally the third one goes in from the other side. Again in through the hole till it makes contact with the nut. And then rotate it clockwise until it's tight. Again, you can undo these when you want to store it, undo them, fold it all back down and it's nice and compact for storage. That's the first part, assembly of the handle. Next thing we'll come to is accept assembly of the shaft and the head itself and we'll go into that in a moment. I'll just turn it round, drop it down here and you can see that the shaft fits in this unit here and we'll go through that just now. Okay, if you go back to your toolkit again, you'll see there's all sorts of tools in here. What we're looking for is the small Allen bolts. Quite a few Allen bolts in here. I'll describe which ones are which and where they go now. There we are. First of all, you'll find that you've got three Allen bolts all the same length. Now these are the three. There are only three that are all the same. These are the three we use for fitting the guard to the strimmer head. Next, you'll have a very long one. This screw goes in this part of the motor and it's the clamp screw that holds the shaft in. Just put it in very loosely for the time being. You'll find you've got one more short screw, a little bit shorter than the three original ones, with a washer and a spring washer on it. Just put it in there just a couple of turns so that it doesn't stick through the inside and they're ready to accept the shaft. All you'll have left then is two medium length screws and two nuts. These are for fitting the cutting or trimming blade to the guard itself, and we'll do that first. So, again in the toolkit is your trimming blade. This goes on the underside of the guard, and as you can see the L shape or the high part is the outside, as opposed to this which would be wrong, the outside is correct. So you'll need to put the two screws, the two you have left over, two identical ones, down through the two, down through the holes. And on the back, you'll see there are some hexagonal holes, which are exactly the same shape as the nut. And the nuts will just drop into the little hexagonal holes. And there's enough there for you to just get the screw started in the nut. The plastic will hold the nut secure in the hexagonal hole. These are actually nylock nuts and the little nylon portion needs to be uppermost so that the screw will start in the thread quite easily until it reaches the nylon. So that's basically in position, now we need to tighten the nuts. Again in the toolkit, you'll see there are two allen keys. What you'll need is the thinner of the two allen keys which is 4 mil. Being careful not to catch your fingers on the sharp edge of the blade. 
tighten up the two bolts. Probably using the Allen key long ways you can rotate it completely and you'll be away from the cutting edge of the blade. Having screwed them right down, final tighten with the Allen key and the other orientation. There we are, and that's the blade fitted. The next stage, using the three identical screw, screws, there are only three that are the same, all the same. So using these three screws, we need to fasten this onto the head of the unit itself. Okay, so we fitted the trimmer blade. Next is to assemble the shaft onto the guard. And that's the orientation you're looking for. As you can see with this face away from the blade, so it bends that down and away. So that would be the operation position. Now again in the toolkit, you'll see that there's a steel spacer ring. That again goes on here. If you rotate it around until the three holes line up, that's the position where we'll fit these three screws. You just need to get them lined up. That's it. You can see the holes underneath the threaded holes line up with the holes in the guard. Then you space the ring. Again, line those up with the three holes. And fit your three screws into the three holes. Quite simple really, it's not too, not too complicated, but you just need to make sure that you can see through the three holes before you uh, try and put the screws in. It does actually all stay together quite nicely while you're doing it. So again, we're going to tighten the three screws up, down to the bottom, and then finally with the other key the other way, Make sure that they're tight. That's the third one done. So that's the plastic guard fitted to the shaft assembly. Before we fit the trimming head, we need to fit the drive ring. Now you notice that this drive ring has a cup on one side and there is one hole around its perimeter. This is quite important, this hole. You'll see in the head itself there's a slot. So when we fit this cup side down, not upside down, but cup side down, you can see that that hole will line up with a slot. And the way we lock the shaft off is by placing an Allen key in the slot, and that locks the whole thing off so it can't rotate. So it's quite simple. I mean, if you've got it in the wrong orientation, just rotate it around. You can do it up through this hole here when it's in use, and that's it locked. It goes up through the hole, you can see in the front, into the hole, you might have to rotate it to get the hole to line up and locks it in place. Once that's locked in place, that can now not rotate. Then we get to the stage where we can screw the strimmer head on. Before I do that, I'll just show you how to load up the strimmer head. If I just remove the cutting cable out of this one. On the strimmer head itself, you'll see that it's got two elongated slots, 180 degrees opposite each other. And that's where you feed in the cutting wire. Now the cutting wire is three mil in diameter and it's 270 mil long. So if you buy a, a roll of three mil cutting wire or what have you, strimming wire, you're looking at 270 mil. So, you know, that's the ideal size, 270, snip it off and fit it as I shall show you now. Feed the wire in through this slot, just push it in and you'll see it come out the other side out of this little groove here. When it's poking out, maybe quarter of an inch, six mil, that's perfect. And it's now locked in place, it'll only go inwards. Rotate it around 180 degrees, do exactly the same on the other side. Probably a little bit fast for demonstration. There we go, sticking out about six mil. And that's the strimmer head loaded up, ready for use. This fits with a left hand thread. So if you imagine you were undoing a nut off the end of this shaft, that's the way you actually screw it on. So I'm going to put it on the top of there and rotate it anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise. 
screw it down firmly until it stops, and then pull up the Allen key, and that's now ready for use. So the next step is to fit the head onto the engine. Remove this when uh, to fit it to the engine, but plug it back on if you're going to store it away, you know, you disassemble it and what have you, and it'll stop any dirt going down into the shaft. So we'll remove that. I think the next thing I'll do is just rotate this around so that you can see what I'm doing. Here we are. Right, bring it a bit closer. Here are the two screws we put in earlier on, the very long screw and the very short screw. If you now remove the short screw, and what we're looking to do is to fit the shaft into the hole and line up this hole with what will then be a screw coming through. So what you'll have to do, fit the shaft, sometimes a little turn of the strumming head as you fit it in, just rotates the gear and then it drops. Right, now what you'll be looking to do is look through this hole and until you see the hole in the shaft underneath come into line. I can't actually see it from this side but I should be able to feel it. And screw the screw in and you'll know if you're in the wrong position because you won't be able to get the screw very far in by hand. There we are, I'm pretty much screwing that all the way in by hand. And it should go right down to the bottom without too much pressure whatsoever. There we are, we're nearly there. There we are, just the last couple of turns. If you feel a resistance on the screw and it doesn't enter the hole, the screw will be quite a bit, you know, quite a bit further back and you'll know that you're not quite in line. And you can just rotate the head a little bit just to line them up. So I'll just finish tightening that one. That's nice and tight. So that stops the shaft rotating and it's in the correct alignment. And finally, using the larger Allen key, the 5mm Allen key, we'll tighten up the clamp screw, which actually clamps around the outside of the shaft and locks it all in there nice and solid. Again, so far down long ways with the Allen key and then the last bit with the Allen key sideways. And that's the head fitted. Next little bit of assembly is going to be the face mask. Now, you'll see that on the face mask are these elongated tabs which will rotate through 180 degrees. Fairly straightforward. Basically, you've got elongated holes in the top of the visor fit them over the elongated tabs, probably starting one end, then rotate them through 180 degrees and it'll lock it in place. So that's those two locked, middle one, rotate, next two in position, rotate and rotate, that's the visor fitted. The next step, you'll see that the ear defenders will actually click into this little slot here. So if you feed the ear defenders over the outside of the mask, or the visor, on the flat part of the headset, that will slot in there, and with a little click, it's in position. I'll show you again with the other side. In the little flat part, feed the ear defenders in, out of the way and a little push click in position okay so that's the mask assembled we put the headphones on it does fit quite nicely on the head you can adjust the uh, size of it using the little hand wheel at the back and it does lift up and down so that you know during use you can bring it down when needed that's that again the gloves are pretty self-explanatory gloves are gloves left hand goes on the left right on the right all that sort of thing Next thing we have is the user manual. Now this is quite comprehensive. There's all sorts of information in here. Um, it does show you which lubricants you need to use um, and it's typically how I do recommend Morris lubricants and the, the specifications of the lubricants, two stroke oil, that sort of thing, is on that sheet. Again, you have your Hyundai Power Equipment warranty registration form. Now it is quite important that you register your warranty. Um, this can be done by simply filling in this form and posting it back to us, or it can be done online or you can do it over the phone, but all the information is on the sheet. And again, the handbook. 
Now, if you do have any problems or you know need any information, everything you're likely to know is in the handbook. Um, should you have any problems at an unlikely event, you could uh, ring us up on our helpline and we can talk you through various things that uh, you might be doing wrong. But I do recommend that you read the user manual thoroughly before use. And the final part is a two-stroke oil mixing bottle. Now, this is vitally important. This is a two-stroke engine. It uses petrol with a two-stroke additive. If you don't add the additive, the engine will not run for very long at all and will basically seize up, um, you know, and that will be the end of the machine. So it's vitally important that you get this right. So you'll see on the bottle here, let me just put it the right way around, here we are, that there is a large line in the word fuel. You need to fill the bottle up with clean, fresh, unleaded petrol up to that line. Now, be as accurate as you like on this, you know, but try and get it exactly right on a level surface. Pour it in through the top until the fuel comes to this line. Let it settle out. Fuel comes to this line. Now then, if you're using the recommended semi-synthetic two-stroke oil, the mixture would be 40 to 1. And you'll see that just above the original line is another line. The word's 40 to 1 written above it. Pour in some two-stroke oil additive, two-stroke oil, until the level of the fluid in the bottle reaches the 40 to 1. If you're using sort of uh, unbranded general sort of DIY shop two-stroke oil, uh, which is typically not semi-synthetic or synthetic, your mixture will have to be 25 to 1. So if that's the case, fuel up to the one litre line as it shows, and then up to the line where it says 25 to 1. If you're using the recommended oil as shown in the, uh, in the handbook, 40 to 1. And if you're going up to the, um, you know, for the standard sort of run-of-the-mill uh, two-stroke oil, 25 to 1, and then you should have no problems with your engine. A little bit more about this engine. It's a 50.8 cc two-stroke engine, as I just mentioned. Now, this is actually um, classified for its emissions as Euro 2, but not just Euro 2, but Euro 2 semi-professional um, which means that it, it will carry on passing its emissions test for a lot longer than a standard Euro 2. And it's a very good quality engine. It's actually very efficient as well. It's got a 0.8 of a litre fuel tank. I'll just show you the fuel tank here and how you fill it. Again, this is a 0.8 of a litre fuel tank. Um, once you've mixed your fuel, basically you can put your petrol with a two-stroke additive straight into there and it will hold 0.8 of a litre. Now that 0.8 of a litre will last approximately an hour's use. Now you will see a lot of machinery on the market with a 52cc engine, um, but all the Hyundai 50.8cc or 5080 machines have this more modern engine and will actually run for an hour on 0.8 of a litre, whereas a lot of these 52cc ones have got a 1.2 litre tank, larger tank, but they will still only run for an hour. So massive fuel saving due to the you know modern good quality efficient design of this engine so you know that's one of the very good factors i mean over the lifetime of the machine you could save you know well over 100 pounds in the cost of fuel and two stroke oil alone um again it's really good quality it's you know we've specified this 50.8 cc engine it's got approximately 1800 watts of power uh, compared to like 1400 watts with the 52 cc engines again showing how much more efficient it is it gets that much more power out of a smaller engine only slightly smaller and that amount of power if you've got another 400 watts you don't need to use all the power again if you're not using all the power and running the engine flat out it's going to last you longer we really like this engine okay so that's enough about the engine for now the next thing we'll do having shown you where the fuel goes in and what have you is the starting procedure Okay, now you'll see up on the handle here, you have a red switch. I can't see it from this side, I'll have to come around here to show you. It's got a 1 and a 0 on it. If you push the position 1 down, that's on position, 0 is off. So 1, that's switched on. Don't need to do anything with the trigger. The next step having filled it with fuel, is to prime it. Now I'm going to tip it on its side to show you the primer bulb. It's got no fuel in it. See if I can show you it. Underneath the air filter here, you'll see a hemispherical bulb. And that little bulb is basically a tiny little pump. When you push that pump four or five, maybe six times, it'll suck fuel from the tank into the carburetor and you'll see it 
coming up into the carburetor and flowing back down. So if you were to pump it, say, one, two, three, four, five, six times, and you're seeing clean fuel with no bubbles returning back down the other line into the tank, that's primed and ready to go. The next step will be to turn the choke on. Again, you'll see on the side of the air filter here, there's a lever, and that lever for choke, when the engine's cold, has to be in the up position. Again, I'll spin that round so you can see it nicely. Choke off, choke on. So when the engine's cold, up, choke on. We've switched it on on the handle. The next step, firm grip on the pull start. Now this is an easy start engine. It doesn't take a great deal of effort to pull start it. So we've got the choke on, switched on on the handle, pull the pull starter, off she goes. Once she's started, after a few seconds, you can turn the choke off. If you've been running for a few minutes and you switch it off on the handle, um, you probably won't need to use the choke on the next start. Um, but if she doesn't start, just use the choke again and what have you. Um, if you've been running for 10, 15 minutes or what have you, then you're very unlikely to need the choke for a second start. So that's the choke starting procedure. To switch the machine off, again, engine will be running. You let go of the throttle. You have the throttle here. Now this is a two, um, a, a two position throttle. This is a lock on the back and this is the throttle itself. So basically, you have to push the back one to be able to pull the throttle. And as you pull that back, the engine speed will increase. As you let go, it will decrease. So that will be revving it up, and that's letting go. So revving it up, letting go. If you're going to stop the engine, I'd suggest let go of the throttle, let everything stop spinning, let it go back to tick over for a couple of seconds, and then switch the engine off. And that's pretty much the procedure for running the machine. So just a quick recap. To start, switch on. If it's cold, prime, and you haven't started in a while, prime. Choke on, pull start. After a few seconds, turn the choke off. That's to rev it up and go. Off you do, doing your strimming. When you're finished, let go of the throttle. Let it set there for a couple of seconds for the engine speed to drop down, and then switch it off. And that's how you would start and stop the machine. Okay, just a couple of other things I will mention. The machine does come with a spare spark plug. Um, to change the spark plug, you'll see this black cover. You have a screwdriver in the toolkit. Remove the screw on the black cover, you'll see the spark plug cap below. Pull the cap off. Comes with a spark plug spanner. Undo the spark plug anti-clockwise, remove it. Fit the new spark plug. Screw it right down in until it's finger tight. If it won't screw in, you've got it you know, misaligned or what have you, but it should screw directly in until it's finger tight. Tighten it back up with the spark plug spanner, which is also included in the kit. Remember to keep all your tools and bits and bobs in your tool kit. Keep everything safe and all in one place. And that's pretty much it. Remember to wear your safety gear. I mean, this thing will be flicking up all sorts of weeds and God knows what, and you don't want to get anything in your eye. I mean, there's nothing worse. So it does come with a PPE provided, as I said earlier. Okay, well, I've been Adrian, and thank you for buying your new Hyundai uh, wheeled trimmer, and happy gardening.